Creating an Accessible Excel Spreadsheet, Part 1. To make an Excel spreadsheet accessible, we want to do many things that are good practice anyway, and some specific things for visually impaired users, such as those using assistive technology screen readers. Module 1 focuses on good general Excel practices. Module 2 focuses on specific practices for screen readers. Note, for making forms in Excel accessible, see Module 3 in addition to ensuring your form has covered the accessibility considerations in these two modules for your spreadsheets. Common sense practices in Excel that also help create accessible spreadsheets. 1. Follow contrast guidelines covered in the Word module about contrast. The easiest way to do this is just to leave the whole workbook in black and white. If you do use color, refer to the Word module about contrast for ways to check that there is adequate contrast for all types of readers. 2. Provide descriptive titles in the Worksheet Name tab for each table. To change the name of the worksheet, double-click on the tab name and type in a new name. To select the worksheet name with keystrokes, use Alt plus O-H-R. Worksheet names can only have 31 characters. There are also some characters that will not accept, including backslash and brackets. Give your table a descriptive name that explains what information it contains. For example, instead of the title Project Plan, use a title that will tell the reader five years from now what the table is about, such as Office 2010 Accessibility Training Module Timeline, Summer 2012. It's fine if the title takes more than one row. It's also okay if you would like to merge cells to center your title. Here's how to merge cells. Start by putting all your titles in the first column. This helps the screen reader find them easily. Next, select the cells you want to merge. Then right-click and choose Format Cells. The Format Cells dialog box opens up. Then, choose the Alignment tab and check the Merge Cells box. Finally, in the Horizontal Text Alignment box, choose Center. Assuming you want your title centered, then choose OK. 3. Each table should have row and column headers for every column and every row in a way that makes sense. Don't leave any headers blank, even if the meaning seems obvious to you. 4. Cells should not be left blank either. If the cell really has no data, then you can put in this cell intentionally left blank or no data. This could be in normal text or change the text color to match the background so only screen readers will read it. 5. Ensure that all hyperlinks work and also show a working URL. Access the hyperlink dialog box by right-clicking on the cell and choosing hyperlink if there isn't a hyperlink yet or edit hyperlink if there is already a hyperlink in that cell. Avoid hyperlinks that say click here. Your link should include the web address itself. Think about someone printing out your table. Will they be able to access the link? Go ahead and include everything, including the HTTP colon slash slash. Add a screen tip. Screen tips provide additional information about the link and are readable by screen readers. Here's how to add a screen tip. Right-click on the cell where your URL is located and choose Edit Hyperlink. In the Hyperlinks dialog box, choose the Screen Tip button at the top right. In the new box, type a meaningful explanation of where the link will take the reader. Click OK twice to close both dialog boxes. 6. Remove extraneous comments before publishing, such as those you use when peer reviewing. Screen readers can't read these, so if that information is important to your audience, copy it out of the comments and put it in a cell. We'll discuss another pop-up alternative to comments in the Excel Forms module. To remove a comment, select the cell containing the comment, right-click and choose Delete Comment. 7. Ensure the print area is set correctly. Highlight the entire area of the table, including titles and other information. In the ribbon, select the Page Layout tab. In the Page Setup group, select Print Area 
and set print area. Eight, hide extra rows and columns that are outside the print area. This makes the worksheet look less cluttered and prevents screen reader users and keyboard navigators from wasting time wandering off into a trackless waste of blank cells. To begin, select the first column you want to hide. Now, while holding down the Shift key, press and release the End key on your keyboard. Still holding down the Shift, now choose the right arrow key. This selects all columns from the first one you selected all the way to the right end of the spreadsheet. Now, with your cursor hovering in the selected area, right-click and choose Hide. To hide unused rows below your data, follow a similar procedure. Leave one blank row below your data, then select the first row you want to hide. Hold Shift as you press and release End and then press and release the down arrow key. Right-click and choose Hide. If you need to unhide these cells later, follow these steps. First, select the last visible column. Next, hover just to the right of the right edge of the column header. Your cursor should turn from a single cursor with arrows into a double cursor with arrows. Click and drag to the right, exposing the very last column. Now select the new, final column and right-click and choose Unhide. 9. Delete unused worksheets. Right-click on the tab of the unused worksheet and choose Delete. Confirm by selecting Delete in the dialog box that pops up. Be careful because this cannot be undone. 10. Be sure to do a spell check. Unlike Word, Excel doesn't automatically put a squiggly red line under any word it thinks is misspelled. In the Review tab, choose Spelling in the Proofing group. Follow the prompts. Also, Excel will only spell check one worksheet at a time, not the whole workbook. 11. Fill out the document properties to assist all people in finding your document if it gets put on a website. Click the File tab and choose Prepare for Sharing. On the right side, there is a frame containing the properties. You may insert your properties directly here or access the traditional document properties by clicking the word Properties and choosing Show Document Panel. Either way works. For our example, we'll show the Document Panel. For Author, follow your agency's practices. For external publication, some agencies suggest putting the agency name instead of the person's name. Choose keywords that fit the subject matter, such as the name of your division and the year. Whatever you put as the subject should probably also be in the keywords or tags. In Status, you might put Draft or Final. Don't forget to change that if the status changes. Close the document properties by clicking on the X in the top right corner. Don't forget to save your document. To summarize, we discussed using proper contrast, providing descriptive titles, ensuring you have row and column headers for your table, not leaving unnecessary blank cells, best practices for hyperlinks, getting rid of comments, setting the print area, hiding extra rows and columns, deleting unused worksheets, performing a spell check, and filling out the document properties. If you follow these steps, you've made a good start toward an Excel spreadsheet that will be easy to understand and will also be accessible to just about anyone, including those using assistive technology. To take it all the way, continue with the additional Excel modules.